Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for joining with us today on our Tuesday Bible study. May your blessing be with us as we open up your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we're kind of concluding our time in the book of 2 Corinthians with chapter 12. This is not the entirety of, obviously, the epistle lesson of the Corinthians. We haven't looked at everything. In fact, we've skipped quite a few chapters, three chapters, to get up to where we're at here today. And we're going to miss a chapter or so at the end. But it hopefully will give you a good overview of what Corinthians, the second book of Corinthians, is all about and why Paul wrote this and the conflict that existed there. But just a reminder, uh, last we left, a couple of chapters ago, um, Paul was talking about love. Okay, That love is to motivate our generosity because of everything that God has done. And so he spends two chapters talking about giving and why the Corinthians ought to be a little less selfish since God has so richly blessed them and give generously of what God has given to them. And then he spends two chapters, because, you know, as soon as you mention that, people are going to get on you and say, well, you know what? You're a hypocrite, Paul. And so, of course, you do have a lot of people trying to convince people, convince others that he's a hypocrite. We know better people than Paul. And Paul says, well, you know what? You're, sure, you're right. There are better people than me. I'm just a jar of clay. I'm just a man who is weak. But I don't try to present myself as anything more than what I am. I am what I am, to quote uh, the almighty Popeye, or whatever, Popeye, the sailor man. I am what I am. Paul says, I'm, I'm a weak person. I'm a jar of clay. You're correct. But I'm not a hypocrite. I present myself exactly the way I present myself. He spends two chapters trying to convince him, you know what? I've given myself for the gospel. I've poured myself out for you. I, I may not be a perfect person, but I have poured myself out for you. And then he goes on in, in today's lesson, chapter 12. This one is really intriguing because it's kind of a transition from this. Paul has been trying to convince them, I'm not a hypocrite. I've, I've cared for you. I may be a weak person. I may be a jar of clay. But they have somebody in mind. The Corinthians have one person in mind. Okay, this is the person that Paul has been compared to. Uh, for the sake of argument, we'll call the person Jake. I don't know. Just because. The name is never mentioned. But Jake, this guy is apparently seen as the great man of Corinth. Everybody loves Jake. And everybody's saying, don't follow that, Paul. Jake has apparently been leading them astray. He's been manipulating them. And we're going to see a little bit more clearly today about how this person, Jake, has been manipulating. Again, remember when I say Jake, we don't know this guy's name. Okay? But everybody who's reading the book of Corinth, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, who was in Corinth at the time, knew who this guy was. And Paul was compared to him. And Paul kind of didn't compare well, at least in their opinion. So we go to verse chapter 12. And, and, and remember, Paul's whole, whole argument is about love. How can you argue this with us? After everything that Jesus has done for you, just be generous and love one another and care for one another. And you've been a privileged uh, participant in the working of the kingdom of heaven. And, and so stop making it about me because we're all jars of clay. And you know what? So is this Jake person. <laughs> but this Jake person doesn't accept that. He thinks he's something special. We're going to see what Jake thinks of himself here. I know a person in Christ, Paul says. This is verse 2. Verse 1, I'm not skipping. It's basically a transition from these two chapters about Paul into this guy, Jake. Okay? I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. What is Paul talking about? You know what? Who cares? I'm serious. Who cares? Don't make a theology about there being, well, you know, there's a first heaven and a second heaven and a third heaven. No, this is what Jake claims happened to him. He's claiming special revelation from God. Okay? So Paul is making a 
mockery of this. This is not a part of our theology. There's no third heaven. There's this heaven. We're just with God when we're not. There's no special place. But this guy, Jake, think this, thinks that there's a third heaven. Why? Because he has something he wants to sell you, basically. All right? So Jake thinks there's a third heaven. So I know a man who is caught up in the third heaven. So everybody, as soon as Paul mentions this, is, oh yeah, Paul's talking about Jake. We love Jake. Whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. And I, and I know such a person. We're in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. He says it twice. <laughs> he was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told. That no mortal is per permitted to repeat. You do get that he's being sarcastic here. Okay? He's saying, he claims, Jake, that he got a special revelation. from God that no one else is allowed shh, to see or hear. And because of this, he's manipulating you to think that he's got something special. So you have to come to him. And, and probably, oh, you know, probably being frank, there's probably, if you come to him asking for special revelation from God, it's probably going to cost you something. Okay? <laughs> it's going to cost you. Some moolah, some money, because Jake is manipulating you. Now, he's, Paul's not directly saying this, but he, he is being very sarcastic about this. So this guy was caught up into paradise, heard things that are not to be told, no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a person, I, I will boast, but on behalf, I will not be a boast except of my weakness. Paul's saying, I know you like this guy, Jake. He's claiming to have special knowledge of being in God's presence, and he's manipulating you. I'm not going to boast about the things that have been revealed to me, because I know I'm a weak person. You know, <laughs> this is a beef with me. Um, pastors, a lot of pastors, will... Be totally different people in public and in their churches than they are uh, in real life. I don't know about this Jake, don't know what he was, but he was trying to manipulate you. So pastors will, at home, they act like this. I try to be the same person whether I'm here, sometimes I'm higher energy, sometimes I'm lower energy, but I'm the same person. I don't try to hide my weaknesses from you. But there's some pastors who do. And they come out there in their pulpit and they start preaching. And, and these voices like this. And you know that they never speak like Or better yet, Billy Graham. Billy Graham. You get all these pastors who like to talk like Billy Graham. Like this. And you know, they don't talk like that. Or the others. I want to talk about Jesus. Jesus. You know, and you're like, nobody talks like this in real life. Are you kidding me? You know what? When I go into a church where people are talking like that, I'm just like, these people are so freakish. They're not real. I get excited about what I talk about. But I'm myself. When I'm getting excited, like right now, this is the way I talk when I get excited about other things. You know, these folks don't talk like this ever in their lifetime. They don't talk like Jesus! Nobody talks like that. They're putting on a show. And they're pulling you in and manipulating you. This is what Jake is doing. By claiming that he has special knowledge that he wants to share. And he's so much better than everybody else, especially than Paul. Paul's saying, I've never hidden who I am. I'm a weak person. This guy probably is too. He just struts around and acts like he's something different than what he probably really is like at home. At home, he's probably counting all the money that you fools have been giving to him. Stop giving it to him. Okay? Ugh. There you go. 
Paul says, I'm going to refrain from boasting. This is verse 6. So no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me. Because this is who I am. I'm a jar of clay. I'm not going to boast in the fact that I walked with Jesus on the, you know, when he was, when he was confronted by Jesus. Remember? There's a story in the book of Acts about that. I'm not going to boast about that. That doesn't make me special. In fact, shame on me, Paul would say, that Jesus had to confront me in that way. It doesn't make me special. I don't have special knowledge from God. I'm just going to be who I am. So I refrain from boasting. Even considering the actual exceptional character of the revelations, verse 7, that, that has been revealed to him. So he's had exceptional revelations revealed to him, but he's not going to try to use it to manipulate people like Jake does. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me. A thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that thorn is. There's been a lot of speculation in life and over in, in, in theologians over the last 2,000 years. A lot of ink spilled about that. Nobody knows, long and the short. Some people say, well, maybe it was his blindness. Remember, he was made blind by his experience with Jesus and the scales came off his eyes. He could see again and maybe he had problems with the eyes. So there might be some plausibility to that. It does seem to be some evidence that he's had some troubles with his eyesight later on in life and had to have people writing for him. In fact, it, it seems pretty evident that the book of 2 Corinthians was not actually written by Paul, but he uh, probably um, asked somebody to write it on his behalf, and he gave him the words to say and so forth, uh, because he often mentions we, 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 you know, uh, to mention that there's more than him behind the writing of this letter when, when you read the book of 2 Corinthians compared to some of his early works. But nevertheless, he's weak. There's another theory, by the way, this doesn't come from me, but it, that he had a wife, uh, and it would make a lot of sense. He was a rabbi prior to his life of becoming a Christian um, apostle, and it would be odd for a rabbi not to have been married. So it's likely he was. She, whoever his wife would have been, just kind of disappears from sight. But maybe she was his thorn in the flesh. Don't know. That isn't my speculation, by the way. I don't know. Just saying it and repeating it because it's hilarious. All right. So three times, verse 8, I appealed to the Lord about this thorn in the flesh. <clears throat> that it would leave me. Imagine if it's a wife. Leave me. Oh, please, leave me. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> three times. But Jesus said to me, verse 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. You're a jar of clay, Paul. You know, this kind of wars against all of those faith healers who claim that if you have faith, you're going to be healed of whatever it is. That's stupid. We don't receive healing until we're dead. And in the kingdom of heaven, this body is a frail jar of clay. It will be broken. We will die. Some of us have very short lives. Some of us have longer lives. But this is not all there is to it. And so when you have churches that are fixated on materialistic blessings and on these physical bodies as though the physical healing is the healing of God, it's actually just a cure. But nevertheless, because we're still going to die, healing is something permanent. The cure of our bodies, even the cure from cancer, is not permanent. It's not a permanent fix. You're still going to die because we're weak. We're jars of clay. So Paul goes on, So I'll boast all the more gladly in my weakness. See, this guy is boasting about how great he is because he's got a special quiet revelation. And he's not going to tell you what it is unless you pay him some money, okay? He's strutting around like so he's a bag of chips and all that. As our former worship leader used to say, J.D., oh no. Paul says, I just am who I am. I'm weak, I'm frail, I'm a jar of clay. You want to throw that in my face as though that's a shame? Well, you know, you need to read the scripture a little bit better because the whole entire Old Testament is about people who are jars of clay. There's not one hero in the Old Testament who was not a mess in real life. That's the thing I love about our Bible. It's all about people who are an absolute mess because they're weak. 
or a jar of clay, and yet God uses. This is what Paul is trying to tell us. So I will boast all the more, weakly, uh, gladly, because of my weaknesses, so the power of my Christ may dwell in me. It's all about Jesus. And so if you see me being weak, it's because I'm proclaiming something that's so much better. Okay? Therefore, I'm content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities, for the sake of Christ, for where I'm weak, then I am strong. My strength comes from Jesus, not from my own body or my own character. Because my character, I fail. I am a weak jar of clay. My body is going to fail someday. It's all about Jesus. So Paul, without saying so, is trying to make sure that you understand this guy who saw the vision in the third heaven is a charlatan. Anybody who wants to manipulate you, okay? Benny Hinn, sorry, did I say that? Benny Hinn. Yeah, Benny Hinn's a charlatan. He's a charlatan. Don't ever give him money. Don't ever give him money. He acts as though he's this Jake. He's got a special revelation. There's nobody special. If they have it, they would give it free. If Benny Hinn actually had the gift of healing like he claims to have, he would give it for free and not expect you to send him money. Because that's what a true person would do. That's what Paul did. That's what Peter did. Okay. We realize that we've been given by God. We give freely because we love. We are weak, but Jesus is strong on our behalf. So please take all of these charlatans who claim to have special knowledge and want to sell you something, or you need to buy something before you can gain access to whatever it is, run away. Because a true Christian Somebody who's motivated by the love of Christ is going to give it to you freely. Did you notice? I've never once in these Bible studies ever asked you for money. Never! I've never said, I have special knowledge from God, and if you give me something, I will tell you what it is. Never! And I would tell you what, if I had the gift of healing and you needed a prayer right now, I would pray for you. I would still pray for you because I believe healing comes from God. I've seen miraculous healings. I don't claim to have any special gift in that. But what I have, I give freely. I'm a weak person. I'm a jar of clay. But I share freely what God has given to me. Let's pray. Holy Father, we thank you again that the love of Jesus Christ overcomes these charlatans who want to charge money or gain power by believing they have special revelation or knowledge from God. If we had a special revelation or knowledge from God, we just share it. Because we don't receive it because we're special. We receive it because it's meant to be shared. And so, God, let us share the love of God with one another. Freely we've been given. Freely we give away. We just thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Now may the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. May God's healing be upon you this week.